Hi, Professor Gassimi here. In this component of the lecture, we're going to be discussing hidden Markov models. A Markov model tells us the probabilities of sequences of random variables, and these variables are called states. In the context of NLP, the states are the individual tokens, bigrams, trigrams, uh, what have you, that make up the vocabulary in your text. So for example, if we were using unigrams, uh, and we had some very simple text consisting of only the word a, cat, and dog, then our vocabulary would just be these three tokens. And these would correspond to three states in our Markov model. Now, Markov models have something called transition probabilities. So that is, they say for each of the states, I can define what the probability of the next word is given that I'm in this word. So the way to read this chart is that given that I'm in the word cat, um, and I want to know what the next word is, there's a 30% chance that it will be dog, a 20% chance it's going to be the word a, and then a 50% chance it's going to be the word cat again. Now, once you've written out all these transition probabilities, they're usually stored in something called a transition probability matrix, which I'm not showing here, but that transition probability matrix just defines for each of the words here, what are the probabilities of them transitioning to each of the other words? And um, because there's a connection between each of the points, obviously that matrix will be square. Now, the useful thing about Markov models is that you can use them for assigning probabilities to sequences of text. So, for example, let's say I have the probability of a cat dog, and I'm interested in understanding that probability from uh, this Markov model that I've specified here. Well, I can break the probability of a cat dog into a sequence of computations that I can perform on the Markov model. The first of those computations comes from computing the probability of A. This is sort of like the prior probability that we computed in homework two, you may recall. It basically says, what's the chances that a given sentence or piece of text is going to start with A according to our training data? So I could come here and notice that, let's say in my training data, that was 20%, and I can plug it in here. And then once I have this starting point, I can now follow the transition probabilities. I can say, I want to now know what the probability of cat is given A. And I can just look at this arrow here and uh, plug it in. And similarly for dog given cat, I can follow this arrow and plug it in to get the final probability of the sequence. Now, I want to be clear that what the Markov model is generating for the probability of the sentence is not actually the real probability, because the real probability, as we discussed during our naive Bayes lecture would include the probability of A times the probability of cat given A times the probability of dog given A and cat. But notice that here we made this simplifying assumption that the probability of the next token only ever depends on the previous token. So the mark that is exactly what the Markov assumption is. It basically slashes out the historical terms other than what happened in one time step before. That's what makes it a Markov model. Okay, so this concept should actually already be familiar to you because it's exactly what we did in homework two. Remember, we built that dictionary um, and we did Laplacian smoothing on it. We had these priors for each of the words. We had the transition probabilities to each of the next words. Everything that you did there was actually building the foundation for a hidden Markov model or a Markov model, actually. We're going to speak about hidden Markov models next. So these Markov chains are useful when you want to compute the probability for a sequence of text. You may recall that we did that for uh, sentences that came from Nietzsche and sentences that came from Bertrand Russell. But what if we want to determine some hidden property of the text? For instance, what if we want to know if a word is a noun, a verb, or some other part of speech? So basically, what if our states really look like this? But you know, when you look at text, the text doesn't say noun, verb, verb, noun, adjective. You get some observations, and you need a way of mapping those observations back to these hidden states. So the question is, how do we do that? Well, that's what a hidden Markov model is for. The hidden Markov model 
is trying to account for the temporal relationships between these hidden states. For instance, if you have a noun, it's probably not very likely to be followed by another noun. It's more likely to be followed, let's say, by a verb. Or an adjective is more likely to be followed by a noun than it is by a verb. Okay, so you can see how this transition probability structure would be useful if you wanted to, for instance, run through some text and tag which of the words in the sequence were nouns, which were verbs, and which were adjectives. Okay, but in order for us to do this tagging, we need a way of tying this to some observations. And these observations are emitted depending on which of these states we're in. So the way this ends up being represented in hidden Markov models is for each of the states here, for example, the state noun, we just write out what are the probability of each of the possible observations given that I'm in the state noun. So for example, for cat, given noun, it could be 20%, dog could be 70, and mouse could be one, uh, 10%. Okay, and we could similarly do this for verbs and adjectives such that for each of the hidden states, we have the probability of all the observations that could occur within that state. Now, once you have the observations and you have the states and the transition probabilities between the states, which could come from some training data, for example, the task of finding the most probable sequence of hidden states from the observation sequence is called decoding. So to be clear, decoding is complicated because if you want to find what the optimal set of tags are for fat cat yawned in this example, you have to compute the probability of fat given noun, then the probability of fat given verb, then the probability of um, fat given adjective. And you'd have to do this for all three of these. But not only that, you'd have to then say, what's the probability of given whatever the first word was, or, or the, the hidden state of the first word, the probability of transitioning to uh, another kind of hidden state and tying that then back to um, the observation cat. So you can see how there's many sort of possible paths that we could traverse here. And if we actually wanted to get the optimal sequence of tags, we would have to traverse every possible path here. And that would get computationally expensive very, very quickly. Okay, so decoding algorithms are meant to try to help with that process. Okay, more specifically, a decoding algorithm is trying to find this optimal sequence of tags, T1, T2, T3, which in this case is an, an adjective for fat, a noun for cat, and verb for yawned. It's trying to find this in a, a more computationally effective way than just brute force searching every possible configuration within your uh, Markov model. Okay, now the classical decoding algorithm for HMMs or hidden Markov models is the Viterbi algorithm. I've written the Viterbi algorithm implementation as documented in our textbook here on the slide. You can also find some excellent implementations of this publicly available on the web if you're interested in stepping through the code yourself. Uh, a contemporary version of this as well is called beam search decoding. So this is very similar to Viterbi al algorithm with the exception that instead of sort of searching a majority of the space, it searches a small subset of uh, the state space when it wants to identify the optimal configuration.